Welcome back to the channel and we're working on the Volvo 480 ES. This is the two litre petrol engine and following on from our relay clacking and difficult or not starting at all, not just difficult. So where we're up to when we turn the starter motor out over the engine turns, everything looks good. But we've been doing a few bits of testing and we've found some electrical gremlins floating on. So uh, let's see how we get on in this video. So we're going to be start doing some more update videos on the Volvo 480. So we're going to take a look and I'm going to take you through a few of the things that I've been doing on it. And also show you a few of the problems that we've got with it. So it's the Volvo 480 ES. You can see we've got a few bits of work that we need on the bodywork. Not too bad to be honest. Underneath, not too bad. One of the common problems on this, you can see the rear lights have gone a bit of a misty colour. So I think what we're going to have to do is use a wet and dry, sand that down a little bit, get those shining again. I am a little bit concerned about that crack there. Not sure whether I'd be able to put some filler in it sand it and smooth it off but that's a future one um, so the bodywork and everything aside we need to do some work on the engine so you can see one of the first jobs that I did was we had a problem with a faulty fuel pump so replacing the fuel pump you can get these fairly easily and there's the fuel pump connector there you can see you have to take out quite a lot of the back so you have to take out this, the, the lower part of the seat and the centre console. Now you might be able to do it with this seat still in, but it would be a bit tight. So it was easier to take that out. Also, I've had a bit of a water leak at the back from the top. Um, so I've taken it all out so that it doesn't get damaged. So it's not constantly ruining all of the interior. You can see the seats aren't in bad nick actually got a couple of bits that are wearing mainly on the driver's seat and they just need a little bit of rejuvenating you see the passenger seat is nigh on perfect same again with the rear seats they're nigh on perfect as well so that's not too bad let's go back in and have a look um, the bonnet release lever that needs a new spring on it it's not self-returning that's an easy fix most of the rest of the dash is all functioning. Been testing it out, connecting it up, things like that. Indicators, uh, the information center. I'll come to that in a separate piece because the info center is an interesting feature on these cars. Now remember, this is a 1994 car and the information center is what you see there. It's a digital display that gives you things like average fuel consumption, range, oil, engine, battery, all sorts of things like that, and it's a digital display. So um, that's got a quite a common fault on it in that the backlights, various other things go on that. So that'll be another one that we're gonna look at, but let's concentrate on the engine. So the first problem that we've got is turning the ignition on and we're getting relay chatter. So what I'll do is I'll get the camera on the tripod and I'll show you what I mean. Actually, just as a little aside, whilst I was setting the camera up for this, I remembered that uh, I had a quick look at the timing belt because this is a this is a barn find. So I wanted to check the timing belt, things like that. That's why the timing belt cover is off at the moment. Obviously, I'm not going to run it for long like that. But the timing belt doesn't look too bad. So at least for testing we can see how we get on with it right let's turn it over and i'll show you what i mean
see there's not a lot going on there at all now it doesn't also sound like it's firing so i think next thing to do is to see if we're getting a spark so what we're going to do as you can see this is the spark generator here and it's got a central master lead that goes into if i can move into the right place the distributor cap so what i'm going to do is take the master lead off take a spark plug put a spark plug on the end of it ground it and then we'll look for a spark and let's see whether we're actually getting anything out of the spark generator or not because remember you need a few key things to get it to fire and spark pretty important As usual this is the point where I wish I'd thought about this I did have some spare spark plugs but of course I threw them out recently which would have saved me having to pull a spark plug out but never mind let's get the spark plug out going to focus? Maybe. Now having a... Now you know something, having a little smell of the end of it, I don't smell much of a petrol smell. I can smell a bit of WD-40 which is probably what I used when I took the old ones out, but I can't smell much of a petrol smell and the tip of that looks absolutely immaculate so I'm not convinced it's sparking or it's getting petrol which would again point to the ECU or the crank sensor something like that so let's see if we get a spark I'm not sure if everyone does it like this but I tend to use a bit of wire terminal. It's going to be difficult because it's a sunny day of course, but generally that's that's how I'd go about trying to test that, because then you know that you've got a known good, because obviously the, the body of the engine isn't in the, in the best of shape, sort of clean and that kind of thing, so that's making sure we've got a nice link to ground. So. Now we need to work out how I can look for the spark whilst we try turning it over. So here we are back after testing the spark and we're not getting a spark. So that's from the main output. Of the ignition coil. So next steps, let's find out whether the ignition coil's working. So that means, are we getting a voltage to it? Are we getting a signal from the ECU? Because like I said before, the clicking relay, I'm sure is connected to the ECU. There's some relation between it. And if that's the case, then that clicking, I think, is indicative of a fault at the ECU level. Which, if that's the case, won't be driving the coil. And if it's not driving the coil, we don't get a spark, we don't get a spark, we don't get the engine going. So, there's another earth connector. Let's just check. Can you actually see what I'm doing? Yes. So, there's another earth connection. Take that off there. And what else is on there? That there is a capacitor, 220 microfarad, 
16 volts now I think that is a noise suppression because it's going between ground on the chassis and the coil ground so I think that's just to eliminate noise which would make sense so I'll take off the primary output lead and what have we got here so we've got two connectors there's, a, there's an empty spare connector there that's not used anyway I'll get you a closer view How's that? That's better. So that's spare. You can see there's, there's actually no pins in there. So you, we know that that's intentionally left blank, as they say. Middle one is a single thin wire. So that to me looks a bit like a signal wire. And those two there, I suspect, brown, which is common on this one, tends to be ground. The other one, I think, will be voltage. So, let's bring the meter in and have a, have a look. Let's probe about until we look at the manual. So we're on continuity. Let's right, say so I think brown tends to be ground on this. Yep, that's 0.6 ohms so that's fine and I think the other one will be positive again 0.4 so we know that our supply certainly looks good to me so that means that this one here must be our signal and the signal will be coming from the ECU so time to look up the manual I think slight update just reading a bit of the manual here so, looking at the supply pin again, brown is indeed ground, constant. This one here, which is the grey and red stripe, now before I had continuity between that and positive on the battery. What I've found since found out is that you'd only do that when the ignition is on, and that is controlled by one of the two relays under the driver's side. That's one of the ones that I've bypassed, because that also runs the fuel pump. So that's why I was getting a constant to this. So in the in the context of what we're doing, that's fine, but that's something worth noting. Just in case you're comparing on yours, that should be switched by the ignition. Back again with a bit of progress. So last time my assistant, my lovely wife, came out and she helped me test this, which, as I've said before, is the signal wire coming from the ECU. Now putting the voltmeter onto this, and the other onto ground, checking for voltage, I was getting a pulsing voltage on it. It's difficult to get a reading because it's pulsing, but the fact it was showing a difference, it was showing zero before and a pulsing voltage afterwards, suggested that the ECU was actually sending the signal. So my next suspect is the coil. Now, interestingly, the coil is made up of two units. One which is the coil itself, and this which is called the computer module ignition coil. So what we want to do is separate the two, take the coil off because it's these two little stars here and we'll see if we can test that out separately and see if it's something to do with the coil. a little bit mashed in to start with so I wonder if someone else has been here before me it certainly suggests it doesn't it try a slightly different one now unfortunately it's kind of chewing the thread up so I shall figure out how to do that and come back to you So 
you can see how it fits together. There's the coil on the top, the two pins that sit down into these two connectors. So this is what they're classing as the computer module ignition coil and that's the coil itself. So we can now test them independently, check for resistance, that kind of thing. So what's the conclusion for today? Well the conclusion for today is I think this is okay, the coil seems okay, all of the ohms readings and everything seem okay. This, which is the trigger wire, on further checking I don't think that's given the right voltage. Now the Haynes manual says to use an LED tester so that means it's going to be a couple of volts as the signal trigger to it. Now when I put a voltmeter on and, and get the car turning over I'm only getting 0.5 volts something like that. Now although it'll be rapidly pulsing I'd still expect more than that. I also put an LED onto it nothing at all not enough to drive it so this takes me back to suspecting ecu is the problem so i think that's the next thing and i think that's all i'm going to do for today so i'm going to take the ecu out leave this out and i think the next time we need to focus on the ecu see if we can figure out what to do so for now that's all on the volvo 480 let's see what comes up next time by the way please remember press the subscribe button down there and you can follow all of the adventures with the Volvo.